basic matte vanilla type shadow will work. Okay, and that's it. Now, I take my big brush, kind of blend it out on the eyelids. I want to leave a little on the lids, but I do want to blend it out on the brow bone. Okay, there we go. Now, a great tip for doing eye makeup, especially when you do a heavy makeup. This is something that I saw many, many years ago, a model doing, showing, and she learned it from a great makeup artist. You take your powder. I've already baked, so... And just a little bit under the eye where you're going to be doing the makeup. You just want to add a little bit of loose powder. And this is kind of a catch-all for the, if any, shadow falls. So we've done that. Now, there again, if you want to do this with a brush, do it with a brush. Like I said, personally, I prefer a sponge for the application. Now... Everyone does it differently. Some people would only do the lid with a brush and they might stop at a certain point. I do the lid in a part of the crease. I want everything, because in the end, everything is going to be blended and very subtle and smoky. This is not a, it's dramatic enough that if you like a dramatic effect, you've got it. But it's not so dramatic that you can't wear it during the day. Like I said, this is my basic daytime look. It's great for blue eyes and green eyes. There again, just a very matte, peachy, coral color. I'm not talking about blazing orange. I'm talking about a very subtle, peachy, coral shade. on the lid and I kind of round the corners a little bit just later on when you add the black accent to the corners you'll kind of clean that up a little bit now if it gets too crazy take your perfect little beauty blender I use the pointed end this is a great cleanup tool by the way, I forgot my chapstick. I always apply chapstick and let it sit on my lips while I do my makeup. Any chapstick will work. It does not matter. It's a great way to keep your lips hydrated while you're doing the rest of your face. Like I said, this is a very, very easy, basic, daytime look. I hope that you ladies, especially you ladies of a certain age, like this. So then we have our peachy tone color and so forth. Alright. A brush. A very basic blending brush. Nothing fancy, nothing expensive. Personally, I don't spend a lot of money on brushes. I don't see the point in spending $55 for one eyeshadow brush, but... This is a Walgreens brush. I don't know the brand name, but I know that it is $10 a piece and they are fabulous. So check out Walgreens. It's in the cosmetic aisle and if I'm not mistaken, it was all the way to the end of the makeup aisle. And I kind of take my brush and I kind of blend this a little bit. Just blend it out so that it's soft like I said all the colors are going to meld together in the end now if this looks really orange it's really not but you'll see once you get the dark brown and the shadow it's going to meld together and this is just going to be basically a lid color if you want to do the crease first and then go back with the lid I know that's really popular I'm old school this is the way I've been doing it since I was 16 I do the lid first and I do the crease next that's the way that we were taught back in the day And I just kind of blend it. And you can kind of shape it a little bit with your... This sponge, these are great. You can get a pack for less than $2. This is a great way to shape your eye. 
I learned this tip many years ago. If you want to shape the corners of your eyes, I know that the tape is popular and so forth, but this is the easy way, the cheap way. These are washable. I wash them in a batch in ivory soap, not an expensive brush cleaner. Ivory soap, the basic bar soap, is fabulous for your brushes and all your makeup sponges and also your hair brushes. And that's what I use to wash all my brushes and my sponges. Plain old ivory soap, wash it and dry it. So dry. All right. So I might add a little bit more, just a second layer, just to make sure I've got some intensity there. Like I said, you can do it any way you want. This is a basic, very basic matte look. So now, if you apply this color or any basic matte shade, whether you're doing a basic soft brown camel. See how I just kind of take my tip of my sponge and I'm kind of shaping around the corner. That's so that I don't have a big gap from here to here. There again. All over the lid. There again. Personal preference. If you prefer to do the crease first and go back. All right, blending a little bit better more, a little blend, 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 and I like to do this kind of a windshield wiper motion with my brush, my large blending brush. Everybody's different. All right, there we go. Got it about where I want it. Now, if you find this particular shade to be too bright or too orange. For your skin tone or your taste you can always go over it with a matte beige to kind of give it a little subtle you could probably go back over it with the vanilla and kind of get rid of some of the orange if that's not what you like this particular shade is from nyx x nyx or nyx whichever you prefer and this is dancing the tides this is a beautiful matte very matte coral shadow this is a great color. Like I said, it's my favorite. Okay, so I got that. Ta-da. All right, now, for a crease color, basic brown. Any basic brown color that you have will work. A matte brown is what you're looking for here. So I go into my drawer of beauties. And I come out with, let's see, you wouldn't want something that's another orangey, orangey, unless you're really going for a dramatic look. This is a MAC shade. It's very pretty, it's very orangey, not sure of the shade. Embark. This is Embark from MAC. It's a very orangey brown. It's another matte. It's a great color. But with this particular shadow, I think it's a little too much orange going on at once. So I really prefer more of a matte brown brown. I would probably stick with something like a Bruin from MAC. That's a good one. Any basic brown. So. I'm going to get my basic matte brown that I'm going to use and I'm going to take that and go into the crease with very lightly in the crease because a lot of the drama is actually going to be on the outer corner and when everything's blended you'll see. Now there again application. You can use a brush to do the crease and blend it up. You can use a sponge blend it up. What I find works well in the crease for me personally, it's just a good old Q-tip. And it's great for the corners as well. You'll see that I'll also use this on the corners. So I'm just going to take it into the crease. Into the crease. There again, if you're, you want to use a brush, feel free to use the brush. 
curve it around all the way around to right here you're adding shape as well as color and that's what it's going to begin to look like like I said the magic is really in the end when everything is blended out this q-tip trick is something that was popular back in the day in the 80s a lot of us were doing this with a q-tip brushes were considered to be a luxury back 30 years ago so most of us teenagers and young women didn't really have a lot of extra money to put into brushes so we used items that were already available handy and you know easy on the budget. Q-tips were great and they do a great job. Another thing about a Q-tip or a sponge, I think I get more control than I do if I had a brush. I know that a lot of you like the brush. I know that looks like very heavy, but there again, it's going to be blended out. And once it's blended out, it's going to be very subtle. Like I said, you're, we're going for a basic day look. Ta-da! Oh, okay, there we go. Not only have I applied the shadow, but I've also added some shape to my eyes. There again, brush, sponge, flat tip to the corner of the eye as such. Now you could do this, if, but there again, you want this. You want to add some shape. Later you can also go back with a clean one. This is also another great shaping item once you have the eyeliner on and so forth. I like to kind of go over and shape it a little. But there again, sponge, placed, brush, and blend. Blend, blend, blend. The key to a subtle look is the blending. Even if you're using glitter, sparkly, frosty colors, if you're going for an evening shimmer look, say you're doing silvers and blacks or silvers and blues, regardless of the colors that you're wearing, even if you're doing a purple, say you're doing a monochromatic purple eye, lavender on the lid, deep purple in the crease, hot pink accents, the key there again is to blend. Now. We're beginning to get a little bit of a dimensional look there. We've got the matte coral, and there again we have a brown in the crease. And you see how the coral and the matte brown kind of meld together right there? There's no harsh line. You can see where they both begin and end. There again. Let's go to the other side. Blend. You can blend inward, outward, windshield wiper. With these flat blending brushes, I find that they're great to lay flat and blend out. You, this way, you can blend. If I had a fluffier brush, I would be doing, I would go straight in. With these thick blending brushes, I find that adding it flat and blending outward seems to get a better effect. Everything will be cleaned up in the end and blended out, and there will be no harsh lines, we hope. Now, the reason I like the matte peach look and the brown with a little bit of accent on the corners is I have blue eyes, and this is great for blue eyes. It's great for brown eyes, like I said. There again, it's a soft, pretty look. Now, we have those colors, guard. 